Venezuela presented before the International Court of Justice in The Hague the preliminary objections to the claim of the Cooperative Republic of Guyana for the rights over Guyana as a Kiba. The final round of talks at the 27th Conference of the Parties of the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change in Egypt is underway, with Brazil strongly advocating for environmental action. The Russian government has said that the recent G20 summit in Indonesia evidenced that the international dominance of the G7 has come to an end. From the headquarters of Telesur English in Havana, Cuba, this is from the south. I'm your anchor, Gladys Quesada, and these are the news. On Thursday, the executive vice president of the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela, Delcy Rodriguez, presented before the International Court of Justice in The Hague the preliminary objections to the claim of the Cooperative Republic of Guyana for the rights over Guyana as a Kiba. In court, Rodriguez explained why Guyana's claim is inadmissible and stressed the unwavering and legitimate rights of Venezuela over the disputed territory. The executive vice president stressed that the national government will not allow a new territorial dispossession and will defend its legitimate claim over the Guyana as a Kiba in all instances. The Guyana as a Kiba has been part of the Venezuelan territory since its confirmation as General Captain Z in 1777 and since its foundations as Republic in 1811 and the Geneva Agreement of 1966 that outruled the fraudulent arbitral award of Paris of 1899. So, we prove with legal arguments, with evidence, we brought historical maps that demonstrate our ownership over this territory since 1777, but we have also demonstrated the fraud. The fraud has been completely evidenced, and it is even more evident that Guyana cannot pretend to come in the year 2020 or 2018 and present a unilateral demand that seeks to disregard the Geneva Agreement, which is the only special law that exists and rules between the parties to resolve the territorial dispute over the territory of the Guyana Esquiva. The Venezuelan vice president called on the Cooperative Republic of Guyana to respect international law so as to resume negotiations on the territorial dispute over the Esquiva Guyanese territory. Of that new defining, the Treaty of 1899 could be made with one of the signatories in absentia, in this case, the United Kingdom. Who are the signatories of the 1887 Treaty, of the negotiating process that ended with an arbitration ruling? Who were the parties involved? It was not the Cooperative Republic of Guyana, because, as I have said already, it had not been established as Republic. So, it is an unfounded request. As we have said in numerous occasions, we invite them to act according to the international law that the Geneva Agreement be respected so that we can go back to the negotiating table to find a solution. The ambassador of Venezuela to the United Nations, Samuel Moncara, pointed out that with convincing evidence, they will demonstrate how Venezuela's territorial rights have been violated. Here we have brought convincing evidence, documentary evidence about the judges, the maps, the arrangements between the U.S. and Great Britain, the deceptions, all the traps, and we have more. We have much more proven historical documentation. It is not our invention. We are going to tell the world now how Venezuela was robbed and how Venezuela has its rights very clear and how it will defend them here and everywhere else. Elsie Rosales, a co-agent for the Venezuelan side, explained that without the presence of the United Kingdom, the court's ruling between Venezuela and Guyana is null and void. This conclusion in 1999 and the Geneva Agreement, it is the United Kingdom, and without the United Kingdom, technically, we tell you, and this is what the entire body of academics who came with us say, there can be no evaluation of what we know is very clear in the Geneva Agreement, which is the recognition of the Venezuelan claim that the ruling is null and void. In the Dominican Republic, the Medical Association and its specialized societies began a strike against health risk administrators. The protest, scheduled for two days, will be in private clinics in the National District, the province of Santo Domingo, and the Eastern Zone. Among the demands are the creation of a basic health plan that considers the health needs of the population and the preservation of a model that does not affect the family economy, as well as unified and index 
the rates. In this sense, the Medical Association informed that during the work stoppage, only emergency and critical care services will be maintained and stressed that the measure was taken in the absence of a response from the government. Addressing the 6th International Congress of African American and Caribbean Knowledge, Barbados Ambassador to the Caribbean Community, David Kamenzian, referred to the island's history and how its society was founded on the basis of slavery. In fact, Barbados was Britain's mother colony in the Caribbean. Barbados used to be known as Little England. And um, Barbados suffered the fate of being the world's first out and out slave society. Now, what do I mean by that? I'm not saying that Barbados was the first society that had slavery as a feature of the society, but Barbados was the first society that was founded completely on the basis of slavery. We'll take a short break now, but first, remember you can follow us on our TikTok account at Tell Us With English, in which you will be able to see news in different formats, news updates and more. Other stories coming up, stay with us. Welcome back to From the South. Republicans have won control of the United States House of Representatives after the decisive results of last week's midterm elections came in, returning the party to power in Washington. But as a lame majority will oppose immediate challenges for the conservative party's leaders and complicate its ability to govern. Republicans secured the 218 seat needed to flip the House from Democratic control. Even with a slim majority, the party will have notable power. They will control key committees, giving them the ability to shape legislation and launch investigations, including potentially into President Biden, his administration, and his family. Any legislation that emerges from the House could face steep odds in the Senate, where Democrats won the barest of the majorities on Saturday. As the global economy struggles, the once booming tech industry in the United States is far from immune. With big tech companies like Twitter, Meta, and now Amazon laying off thousands of workers. More than 100,000 tech workers have been laid off this year to date, surpassing the total for all 2020 when the world was in the midst of the debilitating COVID-19 pandemic. The latest big name to cut staff numbers is online shopping powerhouse Amazon, which began the process of laying off unexpected 10,000 workers this week. Over the past month, other companies like Microsoft, Meta, and Twitter followed suit. However, once one company that is so far refrained for cuts is Apple. Some specialists believe this is because they are being more cautious in their recruitment, while others, like Google, may yet be preparing for expansion. The United Kingdom entered a recession and its gross domestic product will fall by 1.4% in 2023, reported Chancellor of the Exchequer Jeremy Hunt as he presented an autumn statement to Parliament with $65 billion of tax hikes and spending cuts. We are forecast the UK's inflation rate to be 9.1% this year and 7.4% next year. They confirm that our actions today help inflation to fall sharply from the middle of next year. They also judge that the UK, like other countries, is now in recession. Overall this year, the economy is still forecast to grow by 4.2%. GDP then falls in 2023 by 1.4%, before rising by 1.3%, 2.6% and 2.7% in the following three years. 
The president of Cuba, Miguel Diaz Canel Bermudez, is in Algeria for an official visit from November 16th to 19th. This being the first destination of his international tour that includes Russia, Turkey, and China. Diaz Canel Bermudez stressed that his visit is made in the context of the celebration of 60 years of diplomatic relations and the historic ties of brotherhood between the two countries. The president's work agenda includes an exchange with his house counterpart, Abdel Majid Tabun, and a meeting with collaborators of the Cuban Medical Brigade and members of the island's state mission. Diaz Canel Bermudez revealed that the purpose of this tour is to promote efforts to alleviate the effects of a past pandemic crisis that is affecting the whole world and is worsening for Havana due to the effects of the economic, commercial and financial blockade imposed by the United States. Now we move on to other topics. The final round of talks at the 27th Conference of the Parties of the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change in Egypt are intensifying, as ministers across the world aim to reach agreement on a wide range of issues. The Climate Conference will conclude on Friday after two weeks of debates, meetings and sidelines discussions. A number of key areas are seeing slow progress, including talks over a loss and damage fund to help developing nations recover from the effects of climate change. According to R&Ds, several days of discussions to boost green hydrogen fuel production have yielded positive results. If the talks in Sharm el Sheikh do not produce a concrete agreement, parties will have to put vital climate issues on hold until COP28 next year in Dubai. And Brazil's president-elect, Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva, said at the COP27 that a global governance is needed for the fulfillment of climate-related decisions and commitments. Lula da Silva spoke during Brazil's Climate Action Hub event, a group created by Brazilian civil society organizations to discuss climate action. In his speech, da Silva called for the creation of an international body to ensure compliance with climate decisions that are often not implemented by states. Lula defended that climate change and poverty are two inseparable realities that must be fought together and therefore he demanded stricter punishments against those who hurt the environment. And Qatar has established a football fan village using Chinese-made container houses to provide mass accommodation for the FIFA World Cup 2022, one of the most important sport events worldwide. With a population of 2.8 million and an area of less than 20,000 square kilometers, it is a big task for Qatar to host such a large-scale event. And the country has also built more than 100 hotels and transformed various available apartments and villas into temporary hotels. The village owns 6,000 neatly arranged container houses and can accommodate up to 12,000 football fans during the event. It is about a 20 minute a drive from the nearest Al Tumana Stadium. There is also a subway and bus stations nearby so that fans can easily reach any World Cup venue. And we have more news coming up after a final short break, so stay with us. Welcome back to From the South. The Russian government has said that the recent G20 summit in Indonesia evidenced that the international dominance of the G7 has come to an end. According to the 
Kremlin, the United States and its allies displayed their usual hypocrisy at the G20 summit in Indonesia, but the final declaration proved that the G7 no longer dominates the world. Russian negotiator Svetlana Lukask said that the Western countries are accusing Russia of all of the world's problems, whereas they refuse to comply with the commitments made on climate change. In this regard, the Russian officials in Moscow, its BRICS allies and other friendly nations have managed to balance all of the issues from food security, climate to digital and energy transformation. In Myanmar, authorities confirm a massive prison release of around 6,000 detainees on Thursday within the framework of National Day. Among those released were four foreigners. They are Australian economic Sean Tornell, former British ambassador Vicky Bowman, Japanese journalist Toru Kubota, and the U.S. citizens botanist Kiwai Harayu, who were arrested during the February 2021 demonstrations. At the time, they were charged with an alleged link to terrorism and other charges related to sedition and violation of immigration and telecommunications laws. According to the Association for Attention to Political Prisoners, there are more than 13,000 people detained by the military council. On Thursday, Chinese President Xi Jinping arrived in Bangkok, Thailand, to attend the 29th Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Leaders' Meeting. The Chinese head of state will attend the meeting in Bangkok and visit Thailand from November 17th to 19th, at the invitation of Prime Minister Prayut chan o -cha. The 29th APEC Economic Leaders' Meeting will be held on Friday and Saturday under the theme of Open, Connect, Balance. Established in 1989, APEC has become an important platform to facilitate economic cooperation among the currently 21 economies in the Asia-Pacific region which account for about half of global trade and over 60% of the world's total gross domestic product. Now we address their topics. China's health portfolio announced it will continue to take actions to oppose excessive restrictions in epidemic prevention and control. The spokesperson for the National Health Commission, Mi Fen, made the statement at a press conference held by the State Council Joint Prevention and Control Mechanism in Beijing. The Chinese government released a statement on further optimizing the COVID-19 response, announcing 20 prevention and control measures. The move aimed to make response more targeted and science-based, maximize the protection of people's safety and health, and minimize the impact of the epidemic on economic economic and social development. We should always put the people and their lives above everything else, implement the general strategy of preventing both imported cases and domestic resurgences, tenaciously pursue the general policy of dynamic zero COVID, and fully, comprehensively and accurately understand and optimize the prevention and control measures. We should resolutely oppose the two trends of increasing restrictions from level to level or imposing lockdown without considering specific conditions and oppose the irresponsible lying flat attitude in the COVID fight. We should ensure that the 20 new measures can be implemented to the letter so as to protect the safety and health of the people. And we have a disclaimer to announce. Our Facebook page was hacked and is currently displaying content out of our agenda and against our social, moral, political and informative premises. We stress Telesur English is not responsible for these posts that violate Facebook's community standards. We invite our viewers to join us on our new Facebook page at Telesur English Official to stay up to date on current world events.
And we have come to the end of this news brief. But remember, you can find this and many other stories on our website at telesurienglish.net. And also, if you feel so inclined, please join us on social media for all the latest news. We are on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Telegram, and TikTok. For Telesur English, I'm your anchor, Gladys Quesada. Thank you for watching.